This is the Xperia Pro I, Sony's new flagship that's all about the cameras. Its main cam features a huge 1-inch type sensor, a dual aperture, and face detection autofocus. But it takes more than fancy hardware to make a great camera or smartphone experience. I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's go over what the Xperia Pro I is all about in our full review. Many recent Sony phones have come with Roman numerals in the name, but that's not the case here. It's not a Mark I, but an I for imaging, since this phone is aimed towards camera enthusiasts. The Xperia Pro I is made from Gorilla Glass and has a tall rectangular form factor and black finish typical for Sony phones. But it stands out thanks to its unique looking, symmetrical camera setup. Another nice touch is the layered waffle-like texture on the thick metal frame, which adds plenty of grip. Also on the frame is a hardware button for the camera shutter. We've seen this key on every generation, pressing it down halfway will focus and a full press snaps the picture. It's been redesigned this time though and is much more sensitive. Overall, the Xperia Pro I's build is quite durable. It's IP68 rated for dust and water resistance and get Gorilla Glass Victus protection on the front. The Xperia Pro I has the same screen as the Xperia 1 Mark III. It's a tall 6.5 inch OLED with both a 4K resolution and a fast 120Hz refresh rate. The 4K title is a little bit misleading. During normal use, so most of the time, the display will default to a lower 1096 by 2560. When you play back video content though, it will switch to 4K. It would also work in certain apps, but it's never clear which ones, and with what type of content. But no matter the resolution, there's support for the high refresh rate, which smooths out your swiping and scrolling. There is support for high frame rate gaming too, but little in the way of adaptive switching to save energy. The quality of this screen is flagship grade, as you'd expect. There's HDR support and 10-bit color, on top of those inky OLED blacks. Colors can be very accurate, depending on the color mode you choose, and there are plenty of options to tweak them with. Max brightness is a bit tricky, because the phone will boost the brightness within certain apps like Google Photos if you're in the creator color mode. Outside of those, we measured 400 nits maximum with the slider, and boost up to 580 nits in auto mode when in bright conditions. It's not bad, but there are competitors with brighter screens. You get an always-on display for your time and notifications, but the biometrics here aren't under the screen, but through a side-mounted fingerprint reader. For audio, the Xperia Pro I has a traditional headphone jack and a pair of front-facing stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support. The speakers aren't the loudest around, scoring just average on our charts, and the sound quality is decent, but we've heard better mids from other recent Sony phones. There is a bunch of storage on board for your media and camera recordings, 512 gigs, and it's expandable on top of that too. The chipset of the Xperia Pro I is the high-end Snapdragon 888, which you'll find in the top flagships these days. Performance is great, as you'd expect, right there alongside the competition running on the same silicon. You'll be able to run the latest and greatest games, but we did see some drop in performance during longer sessions, due to thermal throttling. The Xperia Pro I has a 4500mAh battery, just like the Xperia 1 Mark III, and battery life is similar. The Pro I was able to score an endurance rating of 87 hours in our proprietary tests. Decent, but nothing too exciting. And for charging, the phone comes with a 30 watt adapter in the box. With it, we were able to charge from 0 to 53% in half an hour. The interface of the Xperia Pro I is a Sony skin on top of Android 11. The home screen itself is pretty vanilla looking, but you do get a few proprietary Sony functions and apps. There's a side sense bar you can tap on for shortcuts. And the multi-window switch is pretty neat. It's basically a double task switcher for your split screen. There's a game enhancer that acts as a hub for your games and provides plenty of options for them too, like performance settings and HS power control. This setting lets you power the phone with an adapter while gaming without actually charging the battery to help prevent overheating. The most noteworthy apps you get from Sony are for photography. First, there's the regular camera app, which is based on Sony's old Photo Pro app. By default, it's made for pointing and shooting, with no need to dive into controls. But if you want more, you can find a Pro section, which will give you more in-depth settings. Then there's the separate Video Pro app, which debuts on the Xperia Pro I, and gives more options for video recording. You get a nice zoom toggle, more menus for controls over things like exposure, 
and the option for recording at up to 120 FPS. The footage will come out ready for consumption too, no need for color grading. In contrast, if you use the Cinema Pro app, you can use a flat color profile and do your color grading in post. There are also more nuanced controls here, and the footage comes out in a cinematic 21 by 9 aspect ratio. While these apps are nice to have, their UIs are a bit quirky, and the way the features work across apps could be more intuitive. For example, Eye Autofocus is a handy feature which will detect the subject and keep them in focus. But for video, it only works on the default camera app or in the Video Pro app if you're not recording at above 30 FPS. It's not supported in the Cinema Pro app at all. We also wish that Sony included features like focus peaking and metering modes for controlling exposure, both of which would be handy for vlogging. Let's move on and talk more about the cameras themselves, and the most exciting of those is the main cam. It has a large 1-inch type sensor together with phase detection autofocus, OIS, and a variable aperture. It's worth noting that while the sensor behind it all is 20 megapixels overall, the camera effectively only uses the 12 megapixels in the center, so the functional size is actually about the same as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Even so, that's still pretty huge, and it allows you to have a shallow depth of field and naturally defocus background in your shots. But you also have the option to manipulate the focus depth by changing the aperture. The variable aperture switches between f2.0 and f4.0. It's manual, not automatic, so you'll need to activate it yourself to achieve the desired artistic effect. Besides the main camera, the Xperia Pro i has an ultra-wide cam with autofocus and a 2.1x telephoto cam, both at 12 megapixels. There's also a TOF camera and color spectrum sensor. Let's talk photo quality, starting off with stills from the main cam. These are very good, with a flagship-worthy level of detail that comes off as natural-looking thanks to more laid-back processing. There's less applied sharpening here than you'll see on other competitors. Colors are conservative, but not dull, and dynamic range is great. In general, when we tried switching to the f4.0 aperture in normal scenes, we didn't get a sharper result. They even seemed a tad softer. But in close-up scenes like we demonstrated earlier, the f4.0 aperture allows you to choose between having a natural bokeh in the shot or to keep more of it sharp, handy if your subject isn't all in one plane. If you want even more blur in your background, you can use the bokeh mode. The subject isolation is quite accurate, and the overall effect pretty convincing. The ultra-wide camera's performance is respectable. Its pictures are sharp and detailed, with a wide dynamic range, and colors which tend to match those of the main cams fairly well. 2.1x zoomed shots from the telephoto cam are good too, with excellent sharpness and detail, wide dynamic range, and colors which again are similar to the main cams. The Xperia Pro i doesn't have a night mode like you'd find on competing phones, but in low light, in the default shooting mode, the phone performs image stacking and processing, which it calls a night scene. These photos come out very good, with nicely sharp detail in well-lit areas and a lot of detail in shadows. Highlights are well preserved too. Rather than turning night into day, the results are left on the darker side. It's a contrasty and more true-to-life rendition. If you're really after that extreme night mode -y look, you can always boost the shadows in post. The ultra-wide cam's output is similar to the main cam's in many ways. The exposure is again on the darker side, and you get nice detail and pleasing colors. The dynamic range isn't quite as wide though, and you're more likely to end up with some blown highlights. Zoom shots from the telephoto at night are surprisingly nice. They have good detail, likable colors, and low noise levels. Selfies taken with the 8 megapixel front facing cam are just decent. Detail is okay if there's good light, and the colors are okay overall, but there's visible noise. If you're after an alternative to the front facing camera for selfies and vlogging, Sony has you covered with its dedicated vlogging accessories, sold separately. These consist of a monitor and Bluetooth shooting grip, and they allow you to see yourself and shoot while you're looking into the rear cameras. If you use the vlog setup to take selfies, the quality is of course much better. You get the advantage of the main cam's higher detail and dynamic range, as well as the natural bokeh effect from the shallow depth of field. But the main purpose is for video recording, and the shallow depth of field and great stabilization work really nicely for your vlog. The controls and playback options are a different story though. You can find out more about these vlog accessories in our dedicated review. When it comes to the actual video quality from the main cam, it's good, but not exceptional, which is a bit of a disappointment from such a high-profile device. 4K footage has great exposure, likable colors, and wide dynamic range, but the detail level is where it falls short. Textures appear soft and smoothed out. 
With the Video Pro app, you can record in 4K at 120 FPS. There is less detail here, but you get the same nice colors and great dynamic range, and a slow-mo effect if you play back at a lower frame rate. Mm -hmm. 4K video taken with the ultra wide is great, especially for this type of camera. We would even say that you get more resolved detail here than with the main cam. And 4K footage from the telephoto cam is great as well, with nice sharpness and detail, wide dynamic range, and pleasing colors. There is support for electronic stabilization on all three cameras in up to 4K resolution at 30fps. EIS does a great job in dealing with walking-induced shake, as well as movements caused by wind and panning. In low light, the Xperia Pro Eyes main camera does a decent job with this video recording. It does preserve a good amount of detail in the dark, and color saturation is good too. Dynamic range is a bit more narrow than some competitors though, and there's visible noise. Nighttime video recording is not the strong suit of the ultra-wide cam. It delivers subpar performance compared to other flagships. The telephoto cam does an okay job at night as far as detail goes, but the footage is still soft and noisy. So that's the Sony Xperia Pro I. It brings the flagship features you'd expect from a Sony phone at this price, including a durable build, a high refresh rate 4K AMOLED, stereo speakers, and a flagship chipset. And on top of that, you get the unique main camera and advanced video recording options. However, despite the hype and price tag, the Xperia Pro I isn't the best in the business. You can find better speaker quality, a brighter screen, and better battery life in other flagships. And while the Xperia Pro I's still photo quality is great, its video recording falls behind competitors when it comes to resolved detail. So in the end, if you're a fan that's after the cutting edge Sony camera phone, the Xperia Pro I is a solid choice. But for everyone else, the benefits you do get here may not be worth the price premium. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.